Today, I am going to be attempting to defeat Stockfish with a gambit that is so rare, it has never been played before. But before we can get into that, I need to all back up and explain exactly how we got here. Now, not too long ago on this channel, I showed you a game played by Jobava that went e4, e5, knight f3, knight to f6, knight takes d5. And here is where Jobava played this really interesting move, pawn to d5. And in this position, black is gambiting a pawn so that when white recaptures, you can take back with the queen and hopefully you can gain time by attacking the knights. You can gain some sort of initiative and you can get a really fun position. And this is what we explored and in that game we saw pawn to d4 but now is where i need to be making a little bit of a confession to you because every single time that i play a dubious gambit or i make some sort of video on a dubious gambit and i put it on this channel i spend countless hours sometimes days trying to defeat stockfish with that very opening and that's exactly what i did with this particular opening but as it turns out i had absolutely no luck because when you put this on the highest level of difficulty on Lee Chess, and you can do this for yourself, you will realize that the computer very often plays this tricky move, queen to e2. And this is not the most popular move in the Lee Chess database. This is not the most popular move in the Masters database. Uh, it's just something kind of rare, kind of wild, kind of out there. And what I was hoping to make work was this variation with bishop to c5, because this is absolutely ludicrous. This allows white to do the discovery that you feared. You're giving up an entire rook. But I was hoping if I played bishop to e6 and white took this, that I would be able to get this position where I'm down an entire rook, but I'm ready to get castled on the king side. And best of all, stop Stockfish thinks that this is totally dumb. So I'm like, all right, perfect. This is kind of the position that I want to try to be able to beat Stockfish with. And I tried for a long time, like three or four nights. I could not get this one to work, uh, at least not in a way that I thought would be very presentable for YouTube. So you know what I did? I scratched it. I said, let's not make a video on that. That's just complete garbage. We're not going to touch that anymore. And I forgot about it and weeks went by. But then... Uh, just a couple days ago, a very small YouTuber reached out to me. Oh no, where did it go? Here it is. His name is Adimsko Soch, and if you like this channel, you will love his channel as well, because he has been inventing all sorts of crazy gambits that nobody has ever been playing before. He's doing stuff against Stockfish, and he's even invented the Drunken Bishop's Gambit, which is what we're going to be taking a look at right now, not even to mention the Zombie King Gambit and all this other really fun stuff. So I'm going to leave a link to Adam's channel. Make sure you check it out, because he told me about this gambit that's never been played before, and it occurs in this position if the opponent plays Knight to F3, which you can see on the Lee Chest data database is actually the most popular move. It's about 50% of the games. Uh, the same deal with the Masters database. So if you play against human opponents, you're going to encounter knight to f3 most frequently. And here, after knight to c6, knight to c3, which is the most common move, this is 54% of all the games, you got queen to h5 that you can possibly play. And now something very interesting happens because if you play against humans, most of the time they are playing bishop to e2 and they're getting castled on the king side. But this is exactly what you want to see if you're playing black because you'll be playing bishop to g4, you'll be playing bishop to d6, you'll be getting to play for some sort of massive attack. But if you ask stockfish, you will see a completely different story. So it turns out maybe humans have have been playing this wrong because there exists this very powerful move knight to b5 and as you can see right here the evaluation is plus 2.2 incredibly winning for white but yet this is going to be the starting position uh, for my game now and i am going to be trying to defeat the computer on the highest level of difficulty with the black pieces in a position that we know is about plus two for the opponents and i'm going to be doing it with the drunken bishops gambit and here you can see uh, why this thing is called this because i'm going to be playing this completely ridiculous random looking move uh bishop to b4 which not only does it put the bishop on kind of a useless looking square i've also just lost my rook in the corner and it's like what the heck is going on why have i gone in for any of this and just to make it a little bit more exciting not only is the bishop on b4 a little bit drunk like he went out to the bar last night but you know what he took an uber home he was safe his buddy was really out late he was like 3 a.m way wasted his buddies had to carry him home boom he's going all the way to h3 trying to destroy the light squares on the king side and this is kind of the interesting thing about this opening which again has never happened before but the main point is that if you do recapture black is actually just winning uh, and i can't make moves on the board but if you can imagine the rook will come to e8 and after this check uh, queen takes f3 is the winning move exploiting the pan you're attacking this rook the knight is coming into d4 and white is completely losing so white has to play bishop to e2 allowing me to grab on g2 and then hopefully i'll be able to make a lot of serious threats now when my bishop gets attacked no problem 
I will be defending it, and I'm going to be trying to win this knight. So uh, the opponent here only has one move, but somehow Stockfish has found it. Pawn to c3 only move. And now I'm going to be recapturing on f3. And <clears throat> after this recapture on f3, sorry, there was some... Somebody's chairs are moving upstairs uh, above me. Uh, I'm now going to have to make a big decision. And I believe there's some sort of force draw. If I play rook to e8, um, the bishop goes back and then I can take this pawn and I think it goes like king to f1 and I can keep repeating by giving a bunch of checks with my queen. But that's not good enough for me. I'm actually going to attempt to win this position. So I'm gonna need to take a little bit more risk and play this move knight to e5, which hopefully gives me a little bit more prospects of winning this game, because now after the bishop goes back, here's where I'm going to be playing rook to e8, and I'm setting up all sorts of nasty threats, and I do want to be able to win this rook, but this is the method uh, that I'm going to be choosing. I now play knight to d3, I'm going to be recapturing, and as you can kind of see, uh, I am sort of running out of pieces in this position. So if you ask Stockfish what to do here, it will tell you, just put a knight here, try to get your knight to f4, do one of these moves. But that also wasn't quite satisfactory for me as well. Uh, it might be a draw, both of those moves, if I can get a knight to f4, but you know what? I'm gonna see if I can trick it and I'm gonna be playing knight to g4 uh, in hopes that Stockfish will just simply blunder and not be able to prevent my checkmating attack. And this is exactly what I'm expecting to see. I'm gonna bring my queen back. I'm trying to infiltrate. I want to deliver a checkmate. And if you give that guy up, whatever, that doesn't really mean anything. Seems like, boom, covering the defensive square. Boom, ah, no, 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 don't pre-move that. Boom. That's how you defeat Stockfish with the drunken bishop's gambit. Thank you for watching. Bye. Subscribe.